Hello everybody and welcome. Kerbal Space Program is getting a new DLC and I have to admit I'm very much intrigued as much as I'm surprised since the announcement came very much out of the blue. The new KSP DLC is called Breaking Ground and will offer two distinct features that I personally and many others have asked for for a long time. First, there will be robotic parts, which basically means that something like Infernal Robotics is now stock. Second, the DLC will offer new ground-based science that you can perform while exploring the planets and moons of KSP. Yes, that's right, you'll finally be able to do more on a planet than just get out, perform science experiments and plant a flag. But what do we really know so far about the robotic parts? We have two screenshots to go by. The first shows two vehicles resembling a scorpion and a spider. The second some sort of quadcopter. Doesn't sound like much, but we can already make some educated guesses about the content of the update based on those two screens. Let's start with the quadcopter. Obviously, there have to be four rotating devices. By the looks of the craft, this means we will finally be able to create some stock propeller aircraft and vehicles. I already have a lot of ideas for that. Eve return vehicle with helicopter assist, anyone? Then there is the other picture. From what I can tell, there seem to be two different robotic parts shown here. A hinge over here. And the legs of the scorpion seem to include some sort of piston. You know what that means, right? 500 ton Kerbal Battle Mac incoming! The only thing I ever managed to do in that direction was my jumping Mac a few years back, but that was with Infernal Robotics and the then still maintained B9 mod. Now, there's a big thing we still do not know how to control and sequence these robotic parts. If you have ever tinkered with Infernal Robotics, you will know it's a bit of a chore to get everything right so that your over-engineered robotic contraption does exactly what you want. I really hope they manage to get this done smoothly. Same with the stability of vehicles. When using Infernal Robotics, craft tend to get really wobbly when applying the robotics parts. Here's to hoping the KSP developers have solved this issue. Staff member Maximal claims they have. I can't wait to try that out. Until we know more, back to the ground science stuff. The breaking ground announcement spoke of new surface features that offer new science to collect. This sparked a debate in the official KSP forums that some users would like to have these surface features in the stock game just without the functionality to gather science. That should be reserved for the DLC. One could argue this could make more people get the DLC, but personally I don't think that these new surface scatters will make it into the base game. There will also be new science modules, which will enable you to collect new data over time. These will require power and transmission equipment. Having a scientist around will help speed up that process. This is a nice addition because it will finally give me a reason to construct a base on a planet besides using it as a fuel mining operation. And coincidentally, it is also something that I have asked for in my popular 10 ways to improve Kerbal Space Program. Click the icon in the upper right hand corner if you want to watch that. Another interesting tidbit is that Kerbals will be able to carry these experiments, and I quote, in their own inventory. This suggests to me that there will be some sort of stock version of Kerbal inventory system available in this DLC and it will be moddable as the same post confirmed. This might be interesting for future mod editions. According to the announcement, the new Breaking Ground DLC will be released on May 30th and will cost 15 US dollars. This is the same as with the first DLC making history and, as with the first DLC, the new Breaking Ground will be free for all early adopters that have bought KSP before May 1st, 2013. So if you bought it on April 30th, you will get this one for free. There will be also a small base game update released in order for the DLC to work, probably version 1.7.1, but this is just an assumption of mine. So, what do I think about this? To be honest, I will need more information for a real verdict and I definitely need to put my hands on it soon, but one thing's for sure, I'm very much interested. At first glance, this already seems to offer more than making history in regards to long-term playability. 
What do you think? Are the developers headed in the right direction with this? More information about this DLC will be revealed in the KSP loading series of the developers, but there is no word yet when that will be out, except for soon. Anyways, exciting times for longtime fans such as myself. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Also, you can watch one of the two cool videos shown on the right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.